Hi YouTube, how's it going? Theo Bean here. Today we are going to be doing a live re uh, reaction to the Resident Evil Chapter 5 gameplay which dropped earlier last week. Um, this is actually my second time recording this because first I recorded it, went to edit, realized my mic was completely screwed up. It should be fixed. If there is some little popping, I do apologize about it. Still is a work in progress. Uh, but for this, you know, I've been really looking forward to this. Resident Evil 4 was has always been one of my favorite games ever so the fact that we're getting a remake for this it i cannot wait to really like delve into this and sink my fingers into it uh but with that let's really dive into the video here and break down what we got <laughs> this is going to have some commentary as well but you know we will uh just kind of go along with it what's going on everybody thank you for tuning into game informer i'm your host alex van a First of all, I want to say the characters overall in the game, uh, especially for Leon and Ashley, just look better. Lewis as well. So far, all the characters we've seen, they look a little bit more realistic, a lot more human compared to the when the game did it in 4. Ashley looks more like a human being. She's not as, like, sexualized, which is nice, right? Especially since she's just the president's daughter. Um, it was just kind of, I don't know, I guess it was very 2000s, but glad that it's more... She seems more genuine, more real. And today, we're going to be taking a look at some of this exclusive gameplay footage that we have from Resident Evil 4 Remake, Chapter 5. We're going to be seeing um, some church gameplay, some Ashley gameplay, and um, some of the cabin fight. As so well this as, looks uh, like know, it is just um, in the part where we did just get into the church. We have freed Ashley, so that is the same compared to the original uh, and now we're gonna have to make our way out of here. Just overall fighting Ganado and and uh, yeah, trying to stay alive. So we've got about 12 minutes of footage uh, here to show Let you. Let me today. fix this as uh, well. I'm joined by, Mar by Marcus Stewart. There we go, Marcus. I'm feeling great. I'm happy to be seeing this section again because, as I mentioned in the cover story I wrote, I've had a lot of fun playing it. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we are. This this footage starts out, and we are, uh, you know, simply escaping from the church. Um, this is how many hours into the game would you say this is, Marcus? Oh yeah. So this is already different, right? Uh, us escaping out of the church, especially going up into the attic here. That was never in the original. Uh, we had to fight our way out of it uh, in the first one. So I'm really curious to see how much the game will be different, considering this is a remake, right? Not a remaster. The game and little nuances will be different, especially in regards to the story and everything that happens with Leon, uh, Uroboros, sorry, not Uroboros, wrong Resident Evil, uh, the Las Plagas virus and everything like that. It's hard to say, uh, cause we don't know how long the other chapters are. It's gotta be at least, uh, probably like three-ish hours, I would guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is not our gameplay, by the way. If people are wondering, this is a B Correct. that Capcom provided, so this is someone okay, on the I've team playing, not us. Yes, <laughs> yes, uh, we did play through this section, everything that you see today. An important disclaimer, Capcom did help out with accommodations for travel. That means like flights, hotel, in association with this cover trip, we didn't. So here we kind of catch Ashley, which if you played the original, is one of the things, right, at certain heights, uh, Leon jumped down, and then you have to interact with Ashley in order for her to follow you you have to catch her because she can't make the jump on her own almost feels like it's a little bit of homage to that or kind of the same thing here or keep with that theme and have any of those conversations like that's our bosses that handle all that we kind of just show up and do our job but it is an important disclaimer that being said we are not influenced by that Roost. i've secured baby eagle copy that is she okay affirmative well done condor one i'll dispatch a chopper asap I'm sending you the coordinates for the extraction point. Make your way there, and don't let anything happen to Baby Eagle. Copy that. Hurry. The weather is getting worse. Roost out. CC the, uh, the so there we have our first phone call with Finnegan. Uh, I kind of like how it's just like a screen that pops up. We can kind of see her as we're on call with her. Uh, I really like the immersion factor of it and how that's been changed for the remake. As opposed to the original, right? If you recall... Every time Finnegan would call you, it'd be like a small little cutscene where you're like staring at your phone or whatever device she'd call you on, and you'd kind of talk with her and everything like that. Uh, but having it there kind of in the screen as you're kind of playing through kind of feels more realistic and more immersive, right? 
uh it never takes away from the gameplay still feels like we're still here while all this is still going on the hunnigan conversations are in game now which is nice uh, and yeah, here we get our first of shot of the of the town or the village i should say this is the village area right <clears throat> Uh, this is for one a lot different, as you can tell. Uh, or not, sorry. This is a little bit different compared to the original, right? We have the Hunter's Lodge here. We kind of start. Looks like we have to pass through here completely. Uh, some of the layout things, as you can tell, are going to be a little bit different. Village Chief's Manor um, as well. Looks like, you know, the layout and where things are is slightly different. The manor was kind of on the left side. We went through to get out. Um, the where it kind of fiends off to the left. Hunter's Lodge, you have to pass through rather than just being on a road. You kind of interacted with it as the intro to the game. Village Square looks like it's probably the closest to what's being kept uh, as it was before. Uh, it's kind of iconic, right? Especially with Resident Evil 4, how big it was. That whole opening scene when everything goes down right there in the Village Square. That looks like it's the same. But in regards to the layout, right, where we have the church, how this connects to the quarry area, even the fish farm, uh, this looks like it is slightly different, especially with the lake here, right? We have the villa, which um, I guess connects to the farm. There's two ways out of the farm in the original, and this goes down to the lake, which I don't recall that being in the original at all. So there are going to be some changes, and I do like the fact that the environments and areas, even though it's going to be the same general space the entire areas have been changed for the most part it's really going to make it feel like even though we are playing resident evil 4 it is an entirely new game all the same way game now which is nice um, yeah okay. you can We're kind of move uh, around while it's happening yeah i nice shot of the map there and going to the uh, the helicopter extraction point where nothing will go wrong i'm sure um <laughs> and uh so yeah the in the beginning you saw, uh, Leon and ashley sort of just talking about so here we see this resources large type of material. Uh, this is something that is completely new. The treasure we just saw beforehand is pretty normal and straightforward kind of from the first one. Uh, as we go through, we collect treasures. These we can kind of sell by themselves or money that we could get from the merchant. Uh, some of the treasures we can combine with other treasures to create something that's even more worth the value compared to what they would be separately. Uh, so what this kind of... That seems pretty straightforward, but in regards to the resource, right, that is something that's completely new. How that will be used, uh, most likely to going to be to upgrade either certain weapons or attachments, things like that, I would imagine. Uh, time will tell to see kind of what exactly we get to use that uh, resource for. About like, hey, we need to get out of here. Uh, fun fact, you know, without spoiling. And then here we have like uh, what's going to be added into RE4. These are going to be the side quests. Uh, here we see it's called the Grave Robber. Those traitors twins should not be allowed to rest in peace for joining the evil, that evil cult. Won't someone, anyone destroy the emblems engraved upon their tombstones? And then it says request, destroy tombstone emblems, area church. We get two spindles and then it shows our progress. There's a little extra area in that uh, upper deck that you can find if you don't want to just beeline it straight for that ladder. Uh, so, you know, keep an eye out up there. I, I found it on my playthrough. Uh, so, yeah, we are... Making our way through here. Leon being a gentleman, moving that out the way because he's all big and strong. So here we have our very first assassination, which was also not a thing that we could ever do in RE4. Uh, this should be very convenient, right? Uh, especially in certain situations. As we can see Leon crouching down, we have a little bit of an added stealth element to it. You know, we don't always have to just run in guns blazing. We can actually try to be stealthy. Maybe if we're trying to save those resources that we might have. Um, you know, I'm glad we're getting more than just pressing the knife button, looking forward, and just kind of swiping aimlessly in front of us. Or once we knock an enemy down, aim turn look down and then start to swipe down right i'm sure everybody that played remembers that and how tedious and kind of annoying that could be at times to do that Come on. Okay. and yeah this part was um pretty fun to get through i tried to get through it stealthily the first couple times so first of all right uh in regards to the gun 
one thing that we notice is the uh we do not have a red dot anymore we actually have a crosshair uh, and the sounds right. and gun the recoil stealthily the first look very times. good very organic right uh if you ever fired a gun you know it's not just uh it's not call of duty it doesn't just fire in a straight line or anything like that right um there is some kick there's some recoil so the fact that we do get that uh does look nice my nice little genuine change uh from this screen here we also get quite a bit of info so i'm gonna move myself out of the way here to kind of make this a little bit more clear but um as we can see here i got the edge of my green screen here uh right down here in this corner other side right here uh there is a little symbol you will kind of see this move as he changes the uh, camera uh but we do get an indication right if ashley's been taken we also see that down here in the bottom right as well uh it shows one of the ganados with ashley over their shoulder saying help and then we also get what's also really nice addition is this um uh, this progress bar kind of showing us how close i'm going to assume she is to them getting to the exit with her where you most likely will get an end game screen or game over screen right uh we also get our gun our ammo uh, 100 ammo is a shit ton of pistol ammo how they have that much i don't know and then here right we get um the fact that we can use that knife for an assassination this kind of goes to show us it looks like we do have a melee weapon durability so uh we do really have to pick and choose how often or how much we want to utilize and use our melee weapons uh since they do not last forever so stronger but also you know do come with some disadvantages as well with the remake it looks like uh just there as well right we see leon shoot the lady First down times. um another thing right like i said instead of aiming down at the ground with the knife and stabbing we do kind of have a finish move uh we do get the prompt here on the screen r2 and it does also show that durability right there as well as we get to do that and as we do that we also see that durability drop down that red bar and from there you see that red bar go away time just to show that you know that has been used just for stabbing to finish off an enemy there And then same thing here, uh, sorry to keep pausing, but right, we can see this progress bar start to move as they go closer to the exit with Ashley. So R2 utilize to stop people from kidnapping Ashley again. Switch to the shotgun. Cut there. First aid spray, same as before. So no animation for that. There's going to be a few jumps uh, in the clips here. Again, that's a Capcom thing, so... So we can still do the stagger two melee attacks, right? We don't always have to use our dagger. Uh, much like RE4, sometimes with headshots or shooting them down uh, in the knee, we could run up to use a melee attack, to just kind of conserve ammo, knock enemies back, things like that. So that is still in the game. This, is, this isn't going to be a straight run-through of the chapter it's gonna jump around at points uh, but as you can see the flash grenade still very effective against those uh tentacle transformed ganado as we uh enter the cemetery you get a little bit of a there we see him doing that side quest that we saw side quests, which is sort of a spin on the cemetery puzzle as you can see you can still shoot birds nests to get those uh precious eggs or i guess a chicken egg that's in a bird nest in the tree don't ask me <laughs> how that works. uh you know how it is but i mean in the original game you killed snakes and got chicken eggs which was always kind of weird here we have our yeah, first look at the vendor who of course everybody who plays re4 loves the vendor you know what are you buying what are you selling all right all the hilarious stuff you'd say with his unique accent but uh here we'll find out more about what exactly is to offer well done. man himself so here we return our uh, complete our side quest. And then here, right, we get a couple of options. Before, it used to just be buy, sell, or tune up. Um, we have our trade tab here as well now, which looks like it's showing a spindle. So, assumedly, spindles are going to be their own resource, not just a treasure to sell back to the merchant. Uh, I'm assuming we can sell these... Uh, 
these spindles for either that's going to be certain resources for upgrades or maybe even just for ammunition things like that whatever resource we might need us to help us in our fights uh then we do see another thing here which is looks like some sort of ticket what exactly that is going to be or used for i do not know and then of course we shows us our currency that we have the money i do not remember the name of it uh that we can use to buy and upgrade our weapons what are you doing What is the wonder how he, uh... And then here we see here, right? Let's just go back. Uh, pretty straightforward in the cell. Um, the cell page. It looks like we can sell items that we can use for certain things as well. Whether this key is going to be used to open up a chest or something like that. I'm not sure how that works. I imagine this can't be a key item. I doubt we would be able to sell it even after we maybe used it. I'd imagine this is for something extra or some sort of side quest right through exploring. Uh, something that we can use that key to open up maybe a secret area with items, resources, weapon, who knows. One has to wonder how he uh, moves with all that heavy equipment in that coat. Ah, <laughs> then just coat. to go back here, right. Uh, what's really nice as well is uh, with our cases... Uh, as we go to buy new items, it'll actually tell you exactly how many spaces that item will use, which is very, very nice. Because um, I'm sure everybody remembers, right, buying a brand new weapon, and you, now you're trying to fit in a case, you're like, oh, shit, I didn't realize this was that big, right? Uh, especially with some of the different guns. Like the original, the first shotgun you get, as opposed to the striker, are completely different sizes. One is two by the side, the other one's by three. Things like that that kind of changes up completely how you manage your your briefcase. That heavy equipment in that coat. Ah, <laughs> you know, must be pretty strong. It's kind of like a like a Dragon Ball, like Piccolo. So here we go to our tune-up. Uh, this all looks very straightforward, exactly like it was in RE4. We're just using money. Doesn't look like we're using any other resources um as well and this is also kind of nice to see us how our upgrades will affect the weapon the stats for it and even the different categories of it as well with the current specs after upgrade and then the max so uh very very nice i was thinking he's just like into crossfit you know uh, you know we, we we don't know he's a mysterious mysterious figure as he's either upgrading our equipment here you can upgrade knives now, as mentioned in the cover story. Which Come is back, nice, Eddie. Which you're going to be needing because they're uh, they have limited durability, and you're going to be using it quite a bit for the new parry mechanic. Quick access, I, like we've had in the more previous, the more recent, I should say, our right installments. There, very nice. Out in the environment for those blue flyers. And then here we have more of these side quests, which looks like they'll just be posted about uh, the different areas we're exploring. So something we'll have to look out for. Eight spindles just for defeating the this wild dog, it says. I need someone. I think he's going to say here in a second. Um, also, another thing to up note as well, that um, as we get these side quests, it looks like we will have the file in case we ever need to reference this. It looks like it also will update our map or probably place a marker uh, in case we are looking to kind of go backtrack, kind of complete these side quests. That way you don't have to kind of scurry around trying to figure out where exactly you're supposed to go for some of these quests. and. To uh, complete them. Oh, so there's the wild doll quest. That was one of the more involved quests that we saw so Absolutely. far. We need to keep moving. And you won't see the solution um, in this footage, but you will see um, sort of what's on the other end of this side. Right, so with this area leading from the church, this room is completely different from the original as well. Completely different aesthetic, the smoke or fog on the ground. The candles, the skulls, really kind of make it feel more like we're in this this abandoned city who's been overcome by this weird virus that we don't know about yet. Uh, this is such a better aesthetic, right? Nice little change for the better, in my opinion, compared to the original. It kind of really set the mood and kind of really hone in on the environment of kind of what we're really dealing with for Leon here as he's just trying to find Ashley and rescue her quest for you yeah um the dog is hard to find we we are going to show the dog um but the way it's like an auto save feature in the top left i guess a little bit 
of a mystery. And here it looks like we're back in the village. We turned left when we left that door. There is another path behind us if we were to turn right out of that door that goes into an underground tunnel that like takes you up through a well in the village. So there's a lot of paths uh, available. Yeah, like when I we both came through here, we just assumed just the way the camera's framed. We're like, okay, this is the it's the only way to go. But yeah, uh, one of the producers pulled us aside and was like, hey, check this out. And we were like, oh, okay. <laughs> he just kicks her right oh, in the face yeah. to shoot her in the knee. Uh, village at night. We have the TMP, some machine gun, some machine gun ammo. Didn't work out for her. Uh, here it looks like we're I, back I, at the manor. Uh, I was going to just comment on the rain. I know that there's a lot of talk about... Uh, rain gate. <laughs> rain gate. The uh, rain has been kind of a highly discussed topic online since the release of this video. Uh, I'm kind of in agreement with the majority of what people are saying is the rain is a little bit much. Even with the higher graphics setting, I do it's agree. Just I think it's a, it's, a lot. Um, it can um just the dashed lines don't aren't the best aesthetic in my opinion the rain effect on leon is totally fine but the the constant little white lines running across the screen isn't the best looking in my opinion uh, and how they animated that could be improved upon i believe whether we'll get a change in the final version i do not know but um hopefully you know we see some sort of change to kind of make it a little bit better looking can be tuned down a little bit um it does feel like intentionally, like it is intentionally obfuscating the environment. Yeah. Um, it kind of adds to that, that tension. Like you can't see what you're shooting. I do agree though. It's, it's a bit much. Um, and you know, it'd be great Marcus, if there's like a, a rain slider. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. I just want a nice little downpour as we see. Uh, I love the lighting in this game. So originally we go through the, here, we don't have Ashley Wright. Bloom on the, uh, so now we're kind of using her to help us access this like, roof, makes, um, this attic area. Like interiors like this, if we lift Ashley up to do her, uh, do her thing, get Leon up there. Yeah, it just makes the interiors creepier. Like that, like the first time that owl made me jump because you just see the glowing eyes in the dark. Yeah. And you're like, oh my god, like what is that? There, there. I will say there, there were a couple times when I was playing the demo where I was kind of back in to a very the village main area. I wasn't pulling up his flashlight, which is kind of frustrating. So I'm just kind of like clambering around in the dark. It was mostly like outdoor. Here oh. we have a he dog. Is. So I think that you're going to stay here. This is not the dog from the quest. Um, but if these are the general dogs in the village, uh, I think the aesthetic change is incredible. These things look so much more disgusting and scary. Especially with the Las Plagas exploding out of its back. Dog. Um, the massive fangs, the Look glowing red eyes, like, it's just complete nightmare fuel. And really, I think, makes these creatures that much more scary compared to how they were uh, in the original RE4. Fangs. Yeah, like, weird. It looks like a scorpion tail. Now that I'm looking at it again. So yeah, uh, Capcom also pointed out, for those wondering, that this dog is not the dog that Leon can rescue in the Several more games. pets. You know, in this game, he's presumably dead. So uh, this is so, going to be know, the farm the time, area? We kind of were like, oh, maybe this is the dog. But they were very clear to point out, like, nope, different dog. And I like, go, okay. <laughs> but yeah, that, uh, they that also dog wouldn't, is pretty hard. They also wouldn't definitively answer if it was the same dog. Uh, in this game, as in the old game, uh, in terms of those the assassinations, used a lot of, of uh, like, maybe it's not a lot of durability. And it's like, okay, <laughs> so you see a blue medallion up there. See the blue medallions, which were in the original as well. Five. So I asked Capcom about that. Uh, hopefully, we get more of these compared to the original. I want to say there's literally only two or three areas we got to do these in the entire game. Uh, meets scavenging, exploring, fun. Uh, and then here we see, right, the village. These areas look like they're all connected. There aren't going to be any loading screens like we had in the original. Um, like the as original we go into like another iconic scene area. from the they first part that, um, here in the village. That side quest reappears in different parts of the map. So you're going to be shooting... It sounds like you're going to be shooting medallions outside of just, like, the village Here we area. get our first shot of um, Luis. sort of, like, divided them into, like, batches of five. Are you? What are you doing here? 
Very good questions, unfortunately. Hi, now. Okay. It's game time. Uh, and due to the cuts... Uh, so this is the infamous scene from Chapter 5. I believe it was Chapter 5 that's still the same as the original. Uh, where you have to defend the house for a certain amount of time here. Uh, just holding out as long as There's you can a lot of with that Luis. Village before the the bridge that we ran over, that you can mm -hmm. you know fight through and explore. Like so it looks like Ashley does hide like she does in the original. She can't be captured here. Uh, the entire indicator here looks like she's gone. Doesn't even show that she's hiding. So, like the original, you don't have to worry about that. There's a lot that they didn't show in this footage. Um, yeah. It's where, at least during our playthrough, the brute first appears, the cow-headed enemy. Um, right in that area just before the the bridge that we crossed but um, yeah because in the footage we've put out of this you, you people have seen the cow uh guy shows up appears in fight, here but you yeah. actually fight him uh well before this so yeah so when he shows like up the fight be, uh, here we get our first yeah, shot of the parry ability with the knife there uh really cool i imagine that should be extremely strong and just to double check here as well Okay, that does use our stamina, or sorry, our durability for the knife, so we can't just spam that to avoid taking damage ever. What were we saying? Yeah, he's definitely a, a recurring enemy, but when he shows up in the fight, you've already had to fight him before, and so I feel like it's Ooh. extra tense because it's like, oh my god, I gotta fight this guy now. <laughs> What's nice is the attack animations is all completely new. Everything's completely different, uh, which is nice, right? If you played RE4, the original, uh, all the enemies pretty much tacked in like one or two patterns. So trying to avoid those was pretty easy, right? Especially once you got really good at the game. Um, yes. So. I saw some people speculating that he might be a single persistent enemy that follows you. i no. pretty sure that is not the case. Yeah, I think he's no, just I, another I have, enemy type. I have killed him several times in different areas. Yeah. Just the new enemy Ooh. type. So this fight was a uh, pretty wild. So as here we have a uh, bullhead, and there he is, Mr. Bullman. It's been a lot of like back and forth. Like, is he a cow? Is he a bull? But I was like, he's got a horn there. Not the a bull thing. Well, a bull is just a cow. It's yes. A male cow. I mean, yeah, they're the same thing. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, but you know, like bulls have horns. Uh, and then yeah, yeah like for say, he is a completely it. new enemy with this massive maul here. Listen. He's He's got a single horn. There. Uh, before we get absolutely smacked in the ass to lose almost all of our health, uh, we do get an option to parry here as well. Or, sorry, dodge. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, but, you know, like bulls have horns. Okay. And, you know. That's fair. That's fair. So, an attack like this, right, we see the evade uh, symbol come up. Very nice because uh, otherwise just running past this looks impossible with how he's swinging and uh, spinning as he's swinging this giant hammer. Listen, he's Got a single and he there, nearly does like almost Leon all of Leon's health, so uh, he will definitely be a formidable foe. Here we get another shot of the case here as well. Uh, looks like we have things for our upgrades as well. Uh, looking here, things are pretty... Da -da -da -da. So it looks like we might need to go back because this is different from and, what we uh, have Yeah, earlier. that's the end of... Uh... So really quick, uh, this will be the last thing for the video. In regards to the cases, what they're pretty much going to talk about here is we will get different cases. Each case has different things that they kind of give us. So for perks, uh, as well as perks, we also get like a little charm that we can attach to it as well, which will give us additional perks. Uh, using the case moving stuff around, all is going to be exactly like how it was in the original. Looks like herbs as well. Uh, this is either two or three green combined, but in order to max our health and increase the max health, uh, we need one red, one green, and then one yellow. So, uh, as we have here as well, so we have our main knife, which looks like uh, it's most likely the one that he had equipped and we saw during the video. We can pick up other smaller knife shivs uh, as loot from enemies. There was a scene at the church earlier where they kind of showed that. Uh, but going back here, let's go back to when he is talking to the merchant. So here's another thing as well, is we actually have our own storage. So, uh, like the original, if it did not fit in your case, you had to get rid of it. That was it. Uh, there was no other sort of storage. So this is really nice, right? If you like a certain gun, you're not sure if you want to upgrade this one or go with the new gun, right? You just get to put it in your storage, test it out. 
I like my old one better. Switch it back up, just keep upgrading that first gun. So that is really nice um, so that we don't have to move on completely when we just want to kind of see if there's a new gun that we like more compared to something else. Uh, there are now customized cases that comes as well, a little chicken charm. The charms and the cases, they... So here we get an idea, right, of the different uh, perks and the charms, like I was saying. So this case that they're using increases drop rate for resources L, which is that thing we saw before. With little passive... Yeah. Stuff in the... And then rate. the charm perk, 100% health recovery for all egg types for the chicken. Yeah. It says open inventory. So right here, right? So this is what I was looking for. So here we get a case of some other things, right, that we can see we haven't seen before. We have this weapon right here, which uh, is something we have not seen. It looks almost like it is a, a magnum of some sort, but uh, there is another screen here that kind of shows that this is called the bolt thrower. Here in the top right, we do see a different type of ammunition, little bolts uh, for like a crossbow, or in this case, it's going to be this handgun, right? We have a rifle ammo, sub ammo, shotgun ammo, our handgun ammo. These are all standard. The same two knives that we saw from earlier before. Uh, that large resource that we collected, it looks like it is some sort of scrap metal wrapped in a uh, some sort of bag. And I'm going to assuming this is going to be our uh, magnum ammo that we had before, or I believe they're called the revolvers. Uh, I'm going to assume what that is, so... That is nice, now a smaller spot for ammo, which is a nice little change. Uh, so it looks like we are getting at least one new type of weapon, uh, which uses bolts. So this will be really curious to see how this works and integrates into the game. Um, especially compared to, you know, when you're going through certain different areas in the game, such as a castle, right? Some of the enemies we fight have crossbows. Whether that'll be the same here, I do not know. And then here we see confirmed that that weapon that we did see is in fact called the bolt thrower. Uh, so that was the only other thing I did want to touch on that I somehow missed. Uh, that is pretty much it for this video. A lot of little things we can really dive into and kind of nuance here. Um, I'm amazed this is 30 minutes worth of content to really kind of dive into out of what's a total of a 12 minute video. Uh, lots of little changes. Everything looks really good. Uh, nothing I'm really concerned about. The only thing is really the rain, which can, of course, always be dialed down. Whether that happens, I don't think that's going to be game changer at all. Uh, new weapons, different perks with the cases, right? Different cases in general, not just upgrading the size. All sorts of different changes to how combat works, especially in regards to melee. And even little nuances to kind of help the clarity of the game such as Ashley being kidnapped, things like that, just to help make everything crystal clear and just more obvious as to what's going on and then uh, kind of just clean up everything that wasn't really polished, I would say, in the original RE4, even though that was an incredible game itself. So really excited for this. I can't wait for this to finally drop here. We're just over a month away for RE4 Remake. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. I'm really curious to see your thoughts, ideas, things like that. Uh, what are you looking for? What kind is most exciting to you? Drop a comment down below. If you like the video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I will be making more RE4 content as we get more news on things coming out. And as the game comes out as well, I'll be making content for that. So until next time, I hope to see you guys again. Peace and deuces. See ya.